People been waiting. You've been waiting for our 2021 MVP picks. Why? Maybe it's because last year we had Antonio Gibson, Kyler Murray, A.J. Brown. We plan to smash it out of the park. We bring our best friends from the industry on today's episode and give you our picks. Stay tuned. Check it out. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell. Enjoy this season. We are going to win some Foot Clan titles this year with you. Enjoy the show. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped has just taken off not only in the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the best men's grooming products available. And at manscaped.com, you're going to get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20. And Foot Clan, we know what you want this year, football, and not just a game or two. You want all of the games and you want them live, but you might not be able to get DirecTV where you live. Well, no problem. You can stream the 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on all your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out of market game. You can even do the condensed 30 minute games. You can do the player tracker, follow 20 of your favorite players with the NFL Sunday ticket.tv max and university premium package. It is absolutely awesome. Go online to NFL Sunday ticket.tv slash Sunday ready now to see if you're eligible. Pro tip use promo code ballers 2021 at checkout to save. 15% again to see if you're eligible for NFL Sunday ticket streaming package. Go to NFL Sunday ticket dot TV slash Sunday ready and use the code ballers 2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, September 1st. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Yet another episode. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti in the house. We are into... September, the NFL is so close. Real games on the horizon. September 9th, kickoff. Today's the Fantasy MVP show. So very hyped for today's episode. Mm -hmm. uh, really dealing with a personal crisis at this moment where... What you got going? Thank you. Thank you. You guys mm -hmm. are good mm -hmm. listeners. Um it's, it's something I've been really staring down for a few months, and I don't know what to do. Oh, a few we're, months. We're here to help, man. Yeah. What's up? I don't know if I need to make the switch from large to extra large on the T-shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, been there, my man. I don't know what to do. Are, are you, you're an extra large now, Mike? No, no. I'm a, look, I've, I've been to, <laughs> I've, I've uh, traversed that line several times back and forth. I've gone large. I've gone XL. I've gone back to large, back to XL. Sitting, sitting pretty in, in large right now. And you've been dealing with this little battle all by yourself. Yeah. Oh, man. I suffer in silence, thank wow. you very much. Wow. I don't, I don't tell the Foot Clan about how I'm a big fat guy. I just, <laughs> I just don't, know what, I don't know what to do. I'm pretty tall. And so the XL, I'm, I, I'm tempted by the length. Oh, yeah. Very nice. But the large, just, is just, the large is just showing off a little too much of what's disproportionate about my upper but, half. But you're worried that the XL is going to be a little too, a little too poofy. Too baggy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I totally understand that struggle. The answer, just to be here for you, okay. is go with the XL for comfort, and then work on filling that sucker out as quick as possible. <laughs> oh, okay. Then, then it's not too baggy. You're living a comfy life. Everything's good. Join me someday That's, at that 2XL. So you're, you're saying... Make the jump to XL, but then just commit to it. That's right. That's right. If you're going to do funny. something, do it right. I thought maybe tightening up so that the large fit better was the solution. That is an option. I think that's Mike's solution. <laughs> My solution is fill it out, brother. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds easier. I will enjoy, it's way easier. I will enjoy that route. Uh, a couple of announcements before we get into the buy-sell news and the fantasy MVP picks, which uh, toot toot. 
our fantasy MVP picks last year were three smash hits, and we'll talk they're about that later. Good. Pretty good. Well, look, I they're not always that way. No, of course not. And so um, I'm going to get as much run from those <laughs> as I can. Uh, big announcement. We we mentioned it earlier, but today yes. it, it's Wednesday, and so that means our debut on Spotify Green Room this afternoon. Very excited. A brand new live show every Wednesday. All you have to do is grab the Spotify Green Room app. It's completely free. You can join us live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time all season long. It is, Green Room is a separate app. It's not then, Spotify. Then Spotify. Just so like for clarification out there, I, I totally get it. Spotify Green Room. It's a separate app. Yeah, and so download the Spotify Green Room app, follow Fantasy Footballers, and then you'll be notified when we're live. Our first show's today. No, this is not uh in in lieu of a Wednesday podcast. If you're listening to this, you know that. But I've seen that out there. People are like, Oh, are you not doing a Wednesday podcast? No, this is just a live event. We've been on Sirius XM live once a week over the past couple of years. This year we're doing it on Spotify Green Room. And we're going to talk news. We're going to take uh, calls and questions, and it's going to be a good time. And it, it'll just be a fun way to head into the new week each and every week. Yep. Uh, you can still get in the Megalobowl at Megalobowl.com if you want to take part in that. We're up over 11,000 entries into the Megalobowl. And if you're drafting this weekend, you can check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at UltimateDraftKit.com. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or Sell, second-year wide receiver Jerry Judy leading the Broncos in receiving yards. Last year he managed to do so with 856 in his rookie year. No Cortland Sutton last season. And so right now he's going in the back of the sixth round. Sutton is the top of the seventh. They're basically neck and neck. Buy or Sell, Broncos leading receiver in terms of yards being Jerry Judy. I love this being on today's episode because my original fantasy MVP pick was, in fact, Jerry Judy. Oh, okay. Now, I pivoted off of that because I partial think that there's a... Partial credit if he does well. No, no it's, 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 to, it's not partial credit if he does well. It's, it's saying, I, I believe in Jerry Judy. I do think that he leads this team in yards. He was an outstanding prospect coming out. And he looked really good on the field last year. Like, you watch him run routes. He was open. And he couldn't catch 50% of his passes. I mean, 50% would be really, really bad. And that would have been better than what he did. However, he had the largest uncatchable rate in all of football tied with A.J. Green. So it was like a lot of it was not his fault. Teddy Bridgewater making the change. I think is going to be good for specifically his style of ball. I think he gets the most targets. I think he actually catches them this year and takes that sophomore leap forward. So while I was not as confident in Judy as I was my MVP pick, in part because of Cortland Sutton, which I'm sure you two guys are about to bring up, I do want the opportunity to say I, I think Jerry Judy takes a big step forward this year and, and leads them as their wide receiver one. I So you're buying. I am buying. I'm selling. I, I, okay. Uh, one of the bold predictions in yesterday's article that I released on the website was that KJ Hamler, who I love, and then Noah Fant, and I think you're going to be disappointed with all the receiving options in Denver. But that, but even if you're disappointed, who uh, leads them Cortland in yardage? Cortland Sutton leads them in yardage. Okay. Yeah. So um, it'll be close, but I'm going to go with Sutton. When it comes to the Broncos – this entire offseason, I've been uncomfortably sitting directly on a fence. and That's never comfortable. Look, if, I uncomfortable because one leg is on each side, that's, right? That, yeah. Yes, that's mm -hmm. it's it's up there. Yeah. It's it's invading my privacy. Yeah. And I, like I, sometimes I lean one way, sometimes I lean the other. Like I'm with you with Jerry Judy. I think he's going to be a great player. But Cortland Sutton... It, a year a year off in football is like five years off in any other sport. You completely forget how good this player was. And Cortland Sutton had a true breakout season just a couple years ago and then unfortunately had an ACL tear. So I, you just I get tugged back and forth. I have them 30 yards apart. But I have Jerry Judy slightly ahead. So I'm going to pick a side and I will buy... Jerry Judy leads the team in receiving yards. 
today. You know, you know what this <laughs> offense reminds me? Don't talk to me tomorrow. You know what this offense reminds me of quite a bit? And it'll make complete sense, and it's the reason he's not my MVP pick, even though I think he's going to take a step forward and, and lead in yardage. Last year, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, right. Curtis Samuel, Mike Davis, they all had so much talent and, and yardage, but it was the touchdowns. It just never came. It was Those guys were like, if they could only score touchdowns on a good rate, and that's going to be the fantasy issue with this team. I agree with you, Andy, that it's possible that this team disappoints a little bit in totality, I think it's going to be because of touchdowns because Teddy B can move an offense between the 20s, but inside the red zone, I, I don't know that that's really where he can thrive. So you might see more of the Melvin Gordon uh, show as far as being able to punch in touchdowns. Yeah, I, I would say when we, we've talked about Carolina so much and what Teddy B did there, but all three of their wide receivers were kind of not great for fantasy. I mean, that's the truth. They were all good, not great. They were all not what you, you DJ Moore certainly wasn't what you expected like you said it's touchdowns Robbie Anderson after a strong start was difficult every single week and then Curtis Samuel came on late but you were like 10 games in you were like I don't know if I can really start him so mm -hmm. uh it's definitely possible Judy has the talent but I I liked what I saw from Sutton in the last preseason game gave me some hope and like you said Mike like Cooper Cup coming off of the ACL immediately right um you know made an impact We'll see what happens in Denver. That was Buy or Sell from pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Oh, boy. I'm going to try to handle this news as elegantly as possible because there's a lot of it. Michael Thomas on the pup. Out for the first six weeks, including the buy. There is... Hope though, like the, the the optimism in New Orleans is that Thomas will be ready to go week seven. So this isn't he's on the pup and then ah when's he gonna come back? They're they're targeting that week seven. Devontae Freeman was released from the Saints, so he's not on the roster. Tariq Cohen's on the pup, so it'll be David Mopportunity and Damian Williams. Saquon Barkley. Um uncertain for week one, Evan Ingram uncertain for week one. No decision has been made until uh, they make it next week. So hesitancy around Saquon. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I would, if you're in a league, you've got an IR slot. Um, if you could throw one of your players there and pick up another stash flyer or even drop a defense, grabbing Devontae Booker is not the worst idea right now. He could be a week one starter um, if Saquon does not play. Uh, DJ Chark, Marvin Jones expected to be ready for week one. Big news here, Irv Smith mm. swerving around the season. Mm. Underwent surgery to repair his meniscus. That's a four- to five-month recovery timeline. They signed Chris Herndon yesterday, uh, or rather acquired him for a six-round pick, which is a decent investment for a player that has done very little at the NFL level. It was a 6-4 swap. Okay. Well, once again, you have a player with the opportunity. Oh, so they gave up a four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's even. I mean they gave up before, got a six back, but that's a pretty big amount of capital. That says Irv's not going to be available, and, and that they, they need, need and that they need someone. And and as much fun as it is to conk when Tyler Conklin uh, gets the ball, it's it's Which not is a, super fun. That's not enough for that offense. Um, and when the trade happened yesterday, this made all of us in the office kind of go, "Ooh, how bad is the Irv yeah. Smith injury?" Actually, if they're willing to go out and grab him, Hernan is someone that at the very least in a dynasty league should be picked up and rostered right now. A uh, big season from Herndon on the way? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I don't right. want to laugh at it because oh. he is post-Adam Gase, and there is still that chance. Okay. Everything but I, but po I did post-Adam Gase is – all right. I mean, what, what's great about this year is we have a lot of players we get to watch and see if mm -hmm. <laughs> we get to test that theory. Well, Chris Herndon uh, preceded Adam Gase. Yes. As well. So and we, When you're talking about like the rookie year where he was one of – very few tight ends who actually surpassed 500 receiving yards. That's right. John Brown has been uh, released. Raiders wide receiver. He asked for his release. Uh, he wasn't happy with his position on the depth chart. Yeah, he wasn't going to start. That, so there you go. That does say that uh, with Aguilar gone and now John Brown out of the way, Brian Edward has uh, Brian Edwards has a chance. Oh, okay, all right. We've upgraded to chance. But here's what I'll here's what I'll say about why I love Brian Edwards as a last round pick. I I have on our league of record team. I took Terrace Marshall and I took Brian Edwards. Terrace Marshall, 
I fully expect I have to hold on to him. He's one of those players, Andy, you bring this up all the time, year after year, about drafting a guy who you can make a decision on week one and cut him and move on. That's Brian Edwards. He's not a rookie. Like He's not going to slowly get worked in after two weeks or something uh, the way that Justin Jefferson was last year. Brian Edwards comes out week one, gets eight or nine targets, is involved, looks like a fantasy option, or see you later, you're off my roster. Yep. So th uh, that's, that's good for a last pick. And truthfully, the most proven receiver on that team is Hunter Renfro. Yep. Yes. Yes. Just per a low ceiling. Lots of productivity in his past compared to both Ruggs and Edwards. So I'm just saying in a full PPR league, you could glance his direction, especially with the question marks around Waller's health entering the year, which he's fine now, but you never know if those things can linger or he could get re-injured. Right. Uh, all right. <laughs> what are you going through the cuts? Xavier Jones was waived, suffered an ankle injury, which was a waived by the Rams in Achilles injury. So Sony Michelle and Daryl Henderson's going to be I mean, they're gonna be the starters. Yep. And uh Wayne Gallman, gone. Forty Niners. Forty Niners. That's fantastic. Corey My Clement. dynasty team has like five San Francisco running backs. He was the only one I didn't have, so Woo! dodge that bullet. Darwin Thompson released by the Chiefs. Jordan Howard released by the Eagles. Travis Fulgham released by the Eagles. Oh, Kiki Fulgham got cut. Yeah, so did Kiki QT, who uh, actually was okay at the end of last year and thought he would get a shot with no Randall Cobb. Nope, mm. he's going to get a shot at the waiver wire. Jason Moore Jr. was cut by the Chargers. No! <laughs> I'm hoping to get back on the practice squad, so or maybe someone picks me up, but I assume I'll clear waivers. And then Des Fitzpatrick, a fourth-round wide receiver pick by the Titans that had some promise in Dynasty Leagues, was cut. They traded up for him. They traded the 126, 166, and 232 for the 109. And that was not that was that was this year. Yes. yes. That was they, they literally took their 126, their 166 and their 232 and they just cut them from the roster. Well, it reminds me of Lynn Bowden Jr. uh with with the Raiders. They traded up to get him and then they let they, him go. I thought they traded him to Miami for nothing. It's, <laughs> this for is dirt, nothing. For dirt. Yeah. Um and then uh Anthony McFarland running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers could be placed on IR. Might be the short-term IR, but uh, that is worth mentioning. Tyron Johnson from the Chargers was cut, so third-round pick Joshua Palmer. Because Joshua Very Palmer, interesting. Yes, Joshua Palmer is not a player I'm drafting because I don't this I don't I don't see a world where, where Palmer comes in week one. And you're like, holy crap, it's Joshua Palmer. But third-round pick that's that is excellent draft capital for a player. Uh, he didn't have huge college production, but. He has a the, the opportunity is there now. Austin Eckler was on this show and he brought up the name of Josh Palmer. So he's someone to uh, just just move that thought to the the back of your brain. I I I think he is a guy that you're willing to draft. Yeah, him? I think he could be one of those week one stars that you didn't see coming. I I'm more interested in him than I'm interested in Brian Edwards right now. So um, I if he if he Mike Williams can't stay healthy and even when he was healthy last year. You had big games from Tyron Johnson, big games from Jalen Guyton. So Josh Palmer is very intriguing because they're going to throw the football. And Keenan Allen has a specific type of role in this offense. Sure. So I am more intrigued than you uh, and more intriguing than you as a as a person, just more intriguing in general. Well, especially after that opening story. Right, yeah. People were very into that. I'm just so sorry <laughs> that you uh, had to bear that burden yourself when you were going through it. Hey, well, I accept your apology. Yeah, uh, I've I've bared that burden <laughs> twice, so I, I can't wait for the next you, burden. You've gone next level. Yeah. Now, is your burden more of a was it a ping pong burden or? Was oh no no no, just power through. It was okay. a power through burden. One this one direction and it's up. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you as always by Sleeper. They listen to feedback. That's one of the things we love about them. The Sleeper platform. Go download the app. Get off of the old fantasy platforms. Make the switch. Sleeper is number one in Dynasty Leagues already. Um, we have our listener league tonight. Where are we drafting, Andy? We are drafting on Sleeper. Got our best ball league about to start on Sleeper. Mm -hmm. uh, the Megla Bowl Ooh. on Sleeper. Mm -hmm. So, All right, we're going to jump into our top 10 fantasy MVPs. We have a number of guests sharing their fantasy MVP picks on the show today, and then the three of us. We'll reveal our selections. 
So excited about that. Last year, Mike went with Antonio Gibson. I had Kyler Murray, and Jason had A.J. Brown on the Fantasy MVP episode. So I'm excited to talk about today's. The (laughs) computer approved. The computer approves those picks this year. So excited to get into that momentarily. We want to thank today's sponsor supporting the show. Uh, DraftKings. Look, football's right around the corner. You can get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. With the NFL returning, DraftKings is giving new customers $200 in free bets instantly when you bet $1 or more on any football game. So listen up. You do not want to miss this because also on week one, DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at $1 million. So if you want to add to the excitement of week one and all the fantasy football, uh, the chance, the shot at $1 million, that's the top prize, can be had. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game and get a free shot at a $1 million prize with your first deposit. That's the promo code BALLERS for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. An official sports betting partner for the NFL must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, and Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Fellas, it's time to become a sharp-dressed man, and our friends at Indochino. Sharp-dressed man. Thank you. Our friends are going to help take you there, and they're going to help take you there at an affordable price this is a affordable price this is a custom tailored suit it fits you it's not off the rack and you're going to be able to afford it because these suits start at just 399 with all the customizations you can go down to the indochino shop and just and they're going to measure you it it takes just a few minutes just a few minutes you pick everything out and 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 sooner than you can imagine a custom tailored suit shows up at your door I look smashing, ravishing. Intriguing. Oh, I thought you were going to sing that one. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Never. Mike looking hot. Ra- yeah, uh, ravishing is the word I went with, but ravishing. Look, I love my Indochino suit. Jason loves his Indochino suit. I tell you, if you've ever worn a suit that is off the rack, you have no idea what you are missing. And right now, Indochino, they are now open at select Nordstrom stores, giving you even more ways to get great fitting and personalized clothing. Find your nearest location at Indochino.com. And right now, you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at INDOCHINO.com. Promo code FOOTBALLERS. Who's your fantasy MVP? All right, into the MVP picks. The power has remained on today. We had our first ever blackout at the studio. This is the 1103rd episode of the show. We've never had that happen. And about 20 minutes into the episode, the power just zoom. Whole building. That very, was fun. very startling. Yeah, and you know that like that sound in all the movie trailers where it goes, boo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's that's what happened. We were in the dark. I was scared. We needed the nightlight that you promised, Sam Darnold. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but we so far so good today. I can handle that every eleven hundred episodes. To be I agree, honest, I agree. That's fair. All right, so we will get it started with our friend and fantasy football analyst from Yahoo Fantasy. Liz Loza with her MVP pick. So you want my fantasy MVP for 2021. Well, it should come as no surprise that I'm going with my boy Austin Eckler of the Los Angeles Chargers. I know people want to come at me about the potential durability concerns, but I happen to have the inside track to knowing that he is going to stay healthy. And besides all that, his God-given talent, his skill set was created for optimal fantasy output, his elusivity as a rusher with a juke rate of over 24% last year, by the way, helps keep him efficient. In 2020, he managed a YPC of 4.6. And then what about his prowess as a receiver with that amazing catch rate above 83%? He checks all the boxes. Here's another one. He's being paired with Joe Lombardi coming over from New Orleans. Now, there is a pass-catching running back in New Orleans 
that's done pretty well for fantasy managers. Lombardi, Eckler, Herbert equals lit. Whoa, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is an impassioned now, argument. The only question I have, because I'm very pro Eckler. Yes. Um, the only question I have is how do you have the inside track to know he's going to be healthy all year? Well, that's a psychic um, and impressive work. But uh, I was between two people originally for my MVP. One of them was Austin Eckler. I, I like the pick. I think that the floor is extraordinarily high uh, for Austin Eckler. He, he has as high a floor as anyone out there. I do worry a little bit about his ceiling, having him on really kind of like, he insinuated he's not made for goal line work. He insinuated that coaches believe he's not. Right. But Players he did have play, too coaches, much coaches. agreement with the coaches. I wanted to be like, yeah, coaches think this. They're wrong. And he was just like, yeah, some guys aren't made for it. <laughs> like, no, you, yes, you are. Um, but, yeah, I, I love Eckler for fantasy. In our league of record draft, which is a keeper league, so there are a lot of players that are already gone, the debate for the number one, number two, number three pick, it came down to Nick Chubb. Austin Eckler, and Najee Harris. Um, I don't see any reason why Eckler in a half-point or full-point league can't outperform those other two guys. Like, sure. He has top five potential in my mind. He could certainly be a fantasy MVP. He's being drafted kind of into the first round, early second round, with some hesitancy. So if the reception totals are Phillip Rivers-esque, which they were when he came back last year, the possibilities are endless for him. He just got to just needs to stay healthy. Yeah, the, this MVP list is it, it's tough. I mean, these are you know some heavy hitters. There's a lot of second round picks in this list, so you're going to have to hear the arguments and take your MVP. All right, let's turn to the good friend of the show, mm -hmm. a good friend of the show, NFL analyst for CBS Sports, Jamie Eisenberg. Jamie Eisenberg here from CBS Sports. The fantasy MVP for the 2021 campaign will be Dolphins running back Miles Gaskin. Remember the joke Brian Flores played on us in the first preseason game when he made Malcolm Brown the starter and everybody panicked? Well, the joke's on you because it drove down the price of maybe the best running back in fantasy. Last year, if you take the 10 games that Miles Gaskin appeared in, take those numbers over 16 games because we all love the extrapolation game. But if you do that, Gaskin would have had over 800 rushing yards, over 600 receiving yards, and would have been in the same category as only one running back to do that which is Alvin Kamara. I don't know about you, but I hear a running back being associated in the same stratosphere as Alvin Kamara. I'm going to buy in. I don't think Malcolm Brown or Savan Ahmed are going to take Miles Gaskin off the field to the extent that's going to ruin him. I actually think he's going to have a tremendous season behind a very good offensive line with what could be a better quarterback situation if Tua Tungavailoa takes the next step. We know Gaskin's going to catch the ball in the backfield. He's going to be successful running the ball. He's going to be the best running back in fantasy. So buy in in the fourth round. You'd be uh, thrilled if you get him in the fifth round. But I love Miles Gaskin this season. He is my fantasy MVP. Well, those were that's, bold words. That's spicy. Well, multiple times he said the best. Yes. So this wasn't equivocating. This wasn't maybe sneaks into the top 10. This was the ceiling is number one for Mr. Jamie Eisenberg. I don't think that's what he's insinuating. He said he's the, the best running back in fantasy. What was, do you take was from best? I heard them. I'm not, okay. Multiple times. I think it was a little hyperbolic there. I mean, yes. obviously, we. I love Jamie. We disagree on Gaskin. If you've listened to this show, and when I say we, I mean myself and Jamie. I know I'm I'm more down on Gaskin than you two gentlemen are. Um, Gaskin was absolutely fantastic in the games played last year. Different offensive coordinator. Uh, not so sure about the offensive line. I think that they did bring Malcolm Brown in. Um, to get some work. What so. did you think about the what what Jamie was talking about the preseason usage? Because he's right. Like I freaked out after that first preseason game because all it it wasn't that Malcolm Brown was just the guy. It was no Miles Gaskin was still there and being worked in, but Malcolm Brown was getting the majority of the work, and then that completely uh, got brushed to the side. And then it was the Miles Gaskin show. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think the pendulum swung too far the other way in that in that next preseason game because it wasn't really entirely the Miles Gaskin show. It was it was a three uh, player rotation. I certainly always have believed that Gaskin is going to be the leader of the rotation, but I I don't think it'll be the same level of uh, market share this year. I I'm in on Miles at this point. Um, I don't know if he can be a the number one or number two guy, but. Is top 10 possible? 
Yes. Oh, without question. Yeah. Yeah. He he's he just does too much for this team. He's involved in too many plays. Seems to have a nose for the end zone. Um, Jamie brought up some of those end of year stats, and you look at this. Malcolm Brown lives to kind of torture you from a perspective of like, okay, they use him here, they use him there, but in the end, the gap of talent between Miles Gaskin and Malcolm Brown is immense, and the team is smart enough to use Gaskin the majority of the time, and he can score from 10, 15 yards out. He can score in the screen game. He can put up reception totals that should be top 10 in the league. I think if they use him as an every-down guy, he's 200 pounds. Like, there's nobody in the NFL that can actually do that. That's the that's the issue. Is small Austin sample extrapolation. Austin Eckler can do that. Austin Eckler is the example. Yeah, he's like 205, right? That's exactly how I see the two of them. Is he's their Austin Eckler, and the way they used him, I am. Uh, I've I've actively I have a trade offer out just now that got turned down for Miles Gaskin from this morning. And I will say I have uh, mostly been in on Miles Gaskin, but after our league of record draft forced my hand into a zero running back approach and I had to take Malcolm Brown at the end of the draft. <laughs> I'm out. I'm, yeah. I'm all in Just on Malcolm Brown, baby, for nice personal analysis. reasons. All right, let's turn to our friend and analyst on NFL Network's NFL Fantasy Live, Marcus Grant. What's up, everybody? It's your man, MG, Marcus Grant from NFL Media. And when it comes to the fantasy MVP in 2021, I know a lot of people are going to say somebody like Patrick Mahomes or a running back like Christian McCaffrey or Dalvin Cook. But I'm going to go a little bit outside the box, and I'm going to give you Antonio Gibson in part because it's going to be the production he gives you on top of where you get him in drafts. You're talking about a guy who's coming off the board somewhere in the second round who has the potential to easily be a top 10, maybe even a top eight running back. You combine that production with the fantasy value you're going to get. He's going to help a lot of people get into the playoffs, maybe even win championships. And at the end of the year, you're going to be talking about Antonio Gibson as your fantasy MVP. You certainly could be. You definitely could be. Gibson is the kind of player that I think is uh, you can be right about him having a limited workload or or not a limited workload, limited production for like Nick Chubb would do for like right. two or three quarters. And then all of a sudden it's two plays. It's a screen pass. It's it's one breakaway run. Like you love explosive ability in a player and Gibson possesses that in a way that a lot of other guys don't in a way that I don't think Clyde does. So do you buy into the potential Gibson season? Oh, you you know that, you know that I do. Last year he was incredible and last year he was a two down running back I mean there are guys that like Nick Chubb they can slip into the top 10 I know we you know yes I want my my running backs to be pass catchers and Gibson was that the volume wasn't what you had hoped for Antonio Gibson in the in the passing game but you've seen the proof of concept that even if the the workload doesn't all of a sudden shift to Antonio Gibson is in on third down all the time he can still pay off at his ADP, but worked into that or worked into Tony Gibson is what if he does start taking third, the third down roll by the, the halfway point of the season, then the, like nothing will stop Antonio Gibson at that point for fantasy. Yeah. I, I think he's the kind of player who can have, you know, not even the like top 10 in the league type of targets, but still do a lot with the targets. So it's, invaluable yeah I mean he's one of those players where you have to decide the projection whether you're confident that his workload is going to go up and his involvement is going to go up or you're not I'm very confident in Antonio Gibson I, I don't have any worries about drafting him where where he's being drafted at all all right <laughs> it's time <laughs> it's time to turn to Adam Lefko. congrats Adam by the way on the NBA on TNT Tuesdays this past year let's hear from Adam Fellas, loved ones, audiences of all ages, Adam Lefko is in the building. Please give me your deferential treatment and bow. Thank you. All hop aboard the Gus bus. Granted, I'm recording this after J.K. Dobbins' injury, and I hope he feels better. But in the meantime, I have been on the Gus bus for years. Every time he touches the ball, he goes eight or nine yards. The offensive line, solid. Love that they added Zeitler and Villanueva on the right side. The fact that Jawan James could be coming back at the end of the year, this offensive line with Lamar Jackson could be dynamic. I'm all aboard the Gus bus as the fantasy footballers MVP. Oh, Ooh. 
delicious. <laughs> I forgot he had the delicious in there. Um, the wheels on the Gus go round and round, Mike. I, you are look, you are into the Gus. I am very into Gus Edwards, especially at his ADP. Uh, he he is such an incredible, sensational player that like he has had to earn his way up from the ground. Maybe that's part of what I like about Gus is the story of you know the the undrafted manages to get on the Ravens. It is so good that they have to keep figuring out ways to get him on the field even when they go out and they have uh, high price free agents like Mark Ingram or they have high draft capital picks like uh, J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards is still getting on the field and now he is the guy. Like I, I believe Gus Edwards will be the main uh, running back for this team. I don't see anyone else out there in free agency who can compete. The backup is a, f a fellow undrafted free agent. I, just remember a couple years ago the Ravens' rushing attack was record-shattering. And yes, a lot of that is Lamar Jackson, but a lot of that is also the running backs. You can, his upside for rushing touchdowns is so immense, and you're getting him in that fourth or fifth round right now. I think that's what I hear the objection regarding Gus the most is, oh, the touchdowns are all going to get siphoned by Lamar. Not they all of them. They score so many touchdowns. Yes. He had six on the ground last year splitting in a committee on 144 carries. So I want to bring that up because I do think he's an 8-10 to 10 touchdown potential player. I made a gamble move. I'm going for a repeat in our Dynasty League. I prefer Gus slightly to James Robinson. So I made the move. I traded James Robinson to get him. Jason, where do you fit in the uh, MVP pick of Gus Edwards? I, I do think Gus Edwards could easily be an MVP pick. He's not someone that I like necessarily more than James Robinson. It depends on where he's going, and, and ADP is kind of out the window with, with Gus Edwards. In some of your leagues that are drafting right now, he's going to fall. He's, I mean, this was a guy I was targeting prior to the J.K. Dobbins injury because he was already involved. Yes. They gave him a two-year you know, two $10 million deal. So they, they paid him before the J.K. Dobbins injury. I really like Gus Edwards. I just wish... Uh, that he caught passes, and that's it's not going to happen. But Ravens running backs don't really do that. Last year, two rushing touchdowns for Mark Ingram, nine for J.K. Dobbins. Like those are up for grabs. Those are all rushing touchdowns that Lamar did not score. I do like the coach's comments recently, just basically saying, "Look, this is going to be. He's our guy. This is our our dude. He fits the system." It's unfortunate what happened to J.K. It seems very similar to Damian Harris to me, a guy who's going to have a, a lot of potential to score sure. a lot of touchdowns, have a ton of yards, be a quality back, but not catch the ball. And it's just a matter of much where, better rushing attack. Where That's those? One. Yes, for sure. Yeah. M higher touchdown odds. All right. Uh, Adam Rank. What's up, everybody? It's me, Adam Rank. You might know me from such shows as Good Morning Football Weekend, NFL Now, NFL's Total Access, and of course, NFL Fantasy Live. And my MVP pick for this season is is going to be Trey Lance. Two reasons, Houston Texans. We don't know when Trey Lance is going to be the starting quarterback for the 49ers, but I do know this Texans defense is going to be one of the worst in the NFL. That is who the 49ers play in the championship weekend. So whatever you do, make sure you are leaving your draft with Trey Lance. He will be the MVP. Oh, brother. He's calling the championship yes, he week preseason. Not only did he hit us with one of the biggest uh, two toots of all of his accolades there at the beginning, but my goodness, calling your MVP because of a championship week matchup? We know you're the in. the season hasn't started? He's one of your my guys. Oh, he's 100% right? <laughs> Andy, <laughs> uh, are, have you changed any opinions based on – what happened with the last preseason game, the rotation, the finger, any any of that has tempered expectations? Or are you still hot and bothered for Trey Lance? Uh, I, I think it's all about, you know, I, I would probably pull that lineup from the championship week. I mean, that's a nice cherry on top for Trey Lance, but the back half of the year is what I'm looking for with him. Like our draft analyzer really doesn't account for a Trey Lance situation, if I'm honest. You shouldn't really have, oh, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't really have a couple of quarterbacks on your roster, but Trey Lance is one of the players that you should – Make sure that, you know, your league doesn't have and you do. And then over the back half of the year, 
there's the potential. The potential is so great that he could be a league-winning player a la Robert Griffin from years ago where the risk is worth the reward. And, you know, I don't know if it'll be week one, two, three, but back half it really should be a lot of Trey Lance. So I'm I'm in. I'm down with it. And the, the price, it's wonderful. So yes. uh, let's turn to Danny Kelly, who covers the NFL and fantasy for The Ringer and Spotify. What's up, fellas? This is Danny Kelly from the Ringer Fantasy Football Show, and my fantasy MVP this year is none other than Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford. Stafford is one of my favorite mid to later round quarterback targets, and I think he could open up this Rams passing offense to levels we haven't really seen since 2018. But this isn't just about Stafford. Rams head coach Sean McVay hosted the Ringer's Flying Coach podcast this summer, and it was my impression listening in that he is extremely excited to for a guy like Stafford to run this offense. After seeing a few of his peers and former protégés like Kyle Shanahan, Matt LaFleur, get a bunch of love over the last few seasons, I think McVay is going to be really revved up to remind everyone that he is still the league's preeminent offensive genius. In other words, I think he's going to throw a lot, especially after losing Cam Akers. That brings me to Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, both of whom bring that magical combination of a high floor and a high ceiling. Woods is probably going to get his 130 targets again this year, but with Stafford under center, he could dramatically increase his efficiency and touchdown upside in 2021. Plus, he's good for a rusher to every game just to boost that bottom line. As for Cup, I've got three words for you. Positive touchdown regression. He scored 10 touchdowns in 2019 and finished as a wide receiver 4 in PPR, then caught just three touchdowns last year and finished as a wide receiver 26. Now, I know that touchdowns are pretty random and unpredictable, but I think with Stafford throwing passes, I'd bet Cup outpaces his touchdown total from last year by a good amount. Bottom line, I think the Rams are going to move the ball. They're going to score a lot of points. Stafford is going to unlock the entire playbook, activate every concept, every play, and everyone in that offense. All right, Jason, what do you think? So uh, I, I brought this up uh, about a month ago where every now and then I look back on the previous season and think, how did we miss X? It's just so obvious and nobody saw it coming. And this is one of those where it's like, okay, Sean McVay is maybe the best offensive mind in football, and he goes out and gets a hand-picked quarterback for his system. It could just work I mean I, I don't have him projected but if he goes out and you know throws for 5,040 and just lights the world on fire and the Rams offense is unbelievable I won't be shocked I don't have him ranked there um, I, but I, I am the highest of the three of us I have him as the quarterback 10 so I'm, I'm happy grabbing him as a late round target yeah Stafford has been difficult to gauge where he can go for fantasy because he he provides nothing on the ground but that what, what I like from from uh uh Danny's bit there is him talking about him talking with coach McVay and like you know I like that narrative the, that, that McVay's but, ready to take the mantle and back. that's what I'm talking about of you know fantasy football we get it, analytics you get in the spreadsheets and you can get you can get too far removed sometimes from the human aspect like I, I'm put put myself in the position of being Sean McVay where you were that guy and then all of a sudden the, the NFL and the and the public are looking at other coaches thinking that they're better than you. I am a crazy competitive person. And if I heard those words as an NFL coach and I was able to turn my offense around, I would devastate everyone in my path. I would run up the scores Bill Belichick style after uh you know all the spygate stuff. Belichick was like you you want to see what I can do if I unleash my offense? I score fifty points a game. That's what I do. So that I think that's a very interesting, uh, a different take that hasn't really been explored on this show. I would agree, and I would just say this: my hesitancy around that situation, I think it really does come down to: can Stafford really stay healthy sure. for a whole season? Like you could have all the greatest plans in the world, but if your starting quarterback is, he doesn't have to be off the field hurt, but if he's banged up, if he's limited, if he's always on the injury report, some of these things, the back for Matthew Stafford in years past have just created a hesitancy um, to where, I mean, you're right, Jay. It could be one of those things where like, oh, well, duh. Why wouldn't this team, Higby and Woods and Cup and Jefferson and like they'll use Tutu Deshaun in a way. Deshaun Watson. Yeah, De 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 Deshaun, Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, we yeah he's there. Deshaun Jackson is making plays. In camp for and getting ready for week one, his his one week. But um, no, you're right. It, it'll be an interesting storyline where we may look back with regret if we don't have a piece of that offense. All right, let's turn to our very own Kyle the Borgogan, Kyle Borgognoni himself from our Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast. 
uh, our editor in chief over here on the website with his fantasy MVP pick. Greetings, Foot Clan. It's your editor in chief, Kyle Borgannoni, aka the Borgogan. Listen, I don't want you cool cats and kittens to be handed the bits this year. So my 2021 fantasy MVP, I'm going to give you a hearty, meaty portion of Kittle. Yes, George Krieger Kittle is my fantasy MVP. And this doesn't sound maybe like a wild stance, given that he's drafted among that elite tier, but I want to let you know how all in I am and you should be in 2021. Kittle can supplant Travis Kelsey and claim his throne as the tight end one in fantasy. We forget how good he was last year despite poor quarterback play. He had a 24% target share and he finished first among all tight ends in yards per route run. He's going in the early to middle third round, and that discount you get from Kelsey affords you the opportunity to grab a stud at running back and wide receiver and opens up the rest of your draft. Over the last three years, Kittle has averaged more yards per game than Stephon Diggs and the same yards per target as Tyreek Hill. And once Trey Lance takes the reins, woo, just log out and enjoy a hashtag <laughs> foot clan title. <laughs> okay. Um, a plus audio quality, D plus jokes. Oh, what? I give it a C plus. Yeah. Well, it started, it ended stronger than the Kittle and Bits beginning. But I look, it's all. Um, you know, it all Jason pales likes that joke in comparison to I, George, I George Kittle's potential. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. There was a Carol Baskin joke in there. Carol Baskin. The reality here is George Kittle is easily forgotten. Um, because he was injured last year, because there's been a lot of talk about Brandon Ayuk, uh, Debo Samuel, um, a, a new rookie coming in. There's a lot of reasons to doubt George Kittle. I mean, genuinely, I, I, I often doubt him myself. And I think if he had played a full 16 and just dominated the way he usually dominates every, every game last year, we'd probably be talking about, are we sure we want to go Travis Kelsey here? So, We'll have to see how the target market share divides up when everybody's healthy, but then everybody probably won't be healthy. It's the Niners, and his talent is undeniable. His physical ability, um, you know, it's it's similar to Travis Kelsey. There's certain guys on the field that you cannot do anything about. He is absolutely one of them. And unfortunately, he does miss a game or two every year, it seems like, with that kind of violent running style. He's just He just goes for it. All right, let's turn it over to Mike, the fantasy hitman. It's oh. time for our MVP picks. want to thank everybody that contributed theirs, uh, which was awesome. Liz, Jamie, Marcus, Adam, Adam, Danny, and, and the Borgogan, I guess we will also give our yeah, adoration sure. to. All right, my fantasy MVP, rookie running back, Najee Harris. I have I've been madly in love with him all offseason, and that – that passion still burns bright. Look at the player coming out of college at, at Alabama, playing in, in the toughest conference in, NCAA, in the NCAA. Almost 1,900 yards, 30 touchdowns. He added pass, catching 43 receptions at the running back position, which is absurd. That's an extremely high number in the college game. And he landed in the perfect place with first-round draft capital. He goes to Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look at the, at the workload that these players have received. Le'Veon Bell, D'Angelo Williams, James Conner, whoever the guy is for Mike Tomlin, they get work. Over the past five years, we've seen the RB1 for Pittsburgh average 83% of the carries and a 16% target share. That is essentially... You are combining Derrick Henry's workload on the ground and Austin Eckler's workload through the air into one person. And on top of that, Najee Harris is a super talented dude to take all of that work and just explode for fantasy football. Over the last decade, first-round rookie running backs that were drafted in the top three rounds, they've all beat their ADP except for Clyde Edwards-Alaire. History is on the side. Of, of Najee Harris. Analytics are on the side of Najee Harris. The film study is on the side of Najee Harris. Everything is there for him to be a dominant fantasy Can player. Can I give two more things that I think are on the side of Najee as Harris? As long as... Oh, yes. No, they're on, they're on okay. your side. I will uh, not hear counterpoints at this time. No, there are no counterpoints. If there were counterpoints for a rookie, it would normally be based on a couple of things. It would be maybe size, right? Like Najee's got the size to be yes, a he's, true he's large. workhorse. And then you would go, okay, age and acclimation time. 
he's older for a rookie running back. There, there is a part of, you know, the closest thing you get to the NFL in college is playing yes, <laughs> at in Alabama the SEC, yes. and in the SEC. And then you combine that with the age, what we've already seen from a trust perspective from the coaching staff, like they drafted him to hand the job to him. So I, I, I can see it. All right, I'll go ahead and jump in with my fantasy football MVP for 2021. It's Raheem, oh, the dream, the, oh, yeah. Mostert, 49ers running back. Uh, look, good vibes heading into the season. For Olajuwon this. just delivered a cease and desist. I'm, I'm warning you. Yeah, well, after a certain amount of years, like if you're not <laughs> on prime time, you, you lose do, your nickname. You don't lose it. You just share it. Oh, okay. So Raheem, okay. the dream, is taking it for at least this episode. <laughs> um. Look, you, the vibes heading into the season are great for this rushing attack. The read option potential with Trey Lance. Uh, if you look at the final preseason game, they ran for 242 yards and four touchdowns. You already know Shanahan can do that, and you're going to unlock another cheat code. I brought it up with the read option with Trey Lance. All 10 plays on their first drive. Raheem Mostert was the only running back out there. He is the guy, and when you listen to the coaching staff talk, his speed to the edge is the secret weapon. Nobody else has it in football, and it's essential to what they're doing in the backfield. Let's remember what Raheem Mostert can do for fantasy. He didn't start a single game in 2019 and had five RB1 weeks, including an RB8 run during weeks 12 through 17. Last year, marred by injury, but he started out and did exactly what I'm talking about. RB6 and RB15 in the game that he ended and left with the MCL injury. He still averaged 85 total yards per game for, th for them last year. McKinnon is gone. This is going to be Raheem Mostert and Trey Sermon, and when the offense is doing what it's supposed to do, it's going to be Raheem. We were bringing it up in the office the other day, and Al was like, is he really the fastest player in football? And yeah, yeah. He, he pretty much is the fastest player in the game. 8.7% uh, of his runs have gone for 15-plus Yards. That's better than Chubb, better than Henry, better than Cook. That's the special sauce, and that is the kind of um, uniqueness to him where he doesn't have to be an every-down running back to still be a fantasy football MVP. He had the two fastest runs in 2020. He's still got the juice, kind of came on late in his career, very much like Gus Edwards. He battled for every inch. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do – I'm not going to presume injury for Raheem Mostert. What I saw – in that final preseason game going into the year was electricity. So I am, I am, uh, I drafted him in our league of record draft, traded up for him, and I'm in on Raheem. Yeah, I mean, I I do have the twinges of worry of both injury because that's been the history and and the fact that Trey Sherman is there. So second half of the year, does he get more and more involved? It's especially, fair. it's fair. Especially if one, my worry is one injury that takes him out for a week. And all of a sudden, Trey Sermon comes in and it just dominates. And then maybe it goes different. But you give, in this offense, Raheem Mostert, 12 carries. We're not talking about 25. You give him 12, 13 touches, and you have really good odds at getting one of those 60-yard touchdown runs. You win your week. I, I am in on Raheem Mostert for draft day right now. I like grabbing him. I like capitalizing on on the falling value of him in drafts. And um, I I do think if I started strong with him, I might move on. I might capitalize on what looks to be a star just because of the situation. But um, I like I like Raheem. He Mostert. might only be a first half MVP for you. Yes, that okay. that would be that would be my take. My, I'd be I'd be happy with that to be honest. <laughs> my confidence in Mostert is not anywhere near where it is for you guys. But you, you're you don't have to pay like with a confidence pick in your draft. You know his ADP back of the sixth round, a, se like a seventh round running back. He's not even in the dead zone, and so uh, for that for those reasons, I am in and very very happy to draft him there. All right, my 2021 fantasy MVP is scary Terry oh. McLaurin. Scary Terry, the Washington wide receiver who already has shown that he is a fantastic world beater, but he has been on a putrid offense with terrible quarterback play, and I believe that this is the year where, the in totality, he is going to truly dominate for fantasy. I'm very confident. I don't have any issues with Terry McLaurin, the player, 
the talent, anything I've ever seen on the field. He is fast. He's a great route runner. He has good hands. He is a clear number one that would be hard for any team to guard. And to recap last year in 15 games, he had 134 targets, 1,100 yards. Again, only four touchdowns. That was the problem for him. He had the ninth most targets, the sixth most yards after catch because he's great. He dealt with an ankle injury, missed a game, but here's what happened last year. If you if you weren't paying attention to the Washington football team, especially through the beginning of the year, because who wanted to watch that entire division? Here's what happened. The first 10 weeks, um, he was a top 10 wide receiver, and that included his bye. He was outstanding. But then Alex Smith, and, and keep in mind, that was with Dwayne Haskins, Kyle Allen, um, later, Tyler Hineke and Alex Smith got in. Once Alex Smith came in, that's where everything changed for Terry McLaurin. He wasn't the worst. He wasn't terrible. He had a good game here or there. But what changed for him was the deep targets because that's what Alex Smith obviously couldn't throw. I mean, he was the check down king. You want to talk about Teddy Bridgewater, not ever going deep, everything right. down to the line of screen. Teddy was 7.6 yards per attempt. Alex Smith was 6.3. This guy did not throw the ball deep. In fact, in those first 10 weeks, deep targets to Terry McLaurin, he had 13 of them, and three were contested catches. In the Once Alex Smith took over, he only had seven, and all seven were contested catches. There were no good deep passes to Terry McLaurin. That's why he was no longer at the pace that he was without Alex Smith. Enter in Ryan Fitzpatrick, who obviously – is a locked in on wide receiver. You know, last year, Washington football team was 30th in terms of wide receiver target share. And if you look at Fitz Magic's history yes. of throwing to wide receivers, I brought this up where it was uh, on, on my love for Curtis Samuel when he said, T Terry and Curtis are my best friends. 2014, he ranked number second. 2015, ranked first. 2016, ranked first. 2018, <laughs> ranked first. And as far as wide receiver target number share. Number second. Number number two, number two. Um, <laughs> he throws to the wide receivers. He peppers them with targets. I just think Terry McLaurin, with a competent quarterback, is going to be great. And third round MVPs at wide receiver they happen every year. Tyreek and Adam Thielen won people championships in 2018. Godwin Cup and Galladay in 2019. Last year it was Calvin Ridley, DK Metcalf. This year I think it's Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin just. For a reminder, because the the argument uh, for touchdowns, he had four in fifteen games. He had seven in fourteen games as as a rookie. So th it's not. I don't think we have a career pattern already set in two years that Terry doesn't get into the end zone. All right, that'll do it for the fantasy MVP episode. We'd love to hear from you, Twitter at the FF Ballers, with your fantasy football MVPs. What do we got going on tomorrow, Brooksy? What's tomorrow's episode? Great, Scott. Jumping into the time machine. Oh, I love that episode. And then Pete, it was funny. I got a message on Twitter. They said, one of my favorite segments is the fantasy court. When are you ever going to do the fantasy court again? Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's Friday. scheduled for Friday. Do, yep. do, 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 do. Now, have you had your robes dry cleaned recently? Are you prepared for the episode on Friday? No, nah, I never dry cleaned my robes. So they have the same sweat that uh, from our live move. from our live tour years ago. Yes, sir. So All that's, right, that's a power move by a rich man. Well, yeah, I mean, just uh, a man who likes his own smells. <laughs> All right, a reminder: you are invited to the Mega Bowl. Head to MegaBowl dot com and take part in the largest fantasy football competition ever. You can win a spot in the Listener League. You can win a. Uh, a wonderful trophy and bragging rights that will um, go with you to your grave. That's how prestigious that is. So megalobowl.com to check that out. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll enter the fantasy time machine and talk to you then. And we'll see you all in just a couple hours on Green Room. And then we'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.